All right, what's going on guys? In this one, we're gonna be talking about crested geckos. Just a little bit of background on these guys. They are a New Caledonian gecko. New Caledonia is just a tropical island just north of New Zealand, right off the coast of Australia. So these guys are kept in humid, tropical environments. The crested gecko gets its name from that ridge line that runs over its eye and then down its back. So it kind of gives it that crest. They're also called eyelash geckos sometimes because it often looks like they have eyelashes just going right over their eyes there. One of the biggest things to know when you get a crested gecko is they do live up to 15 to 20 years. So it is a little bit longer term than a lot of reptiles, uh, but they are pretty easy to keep. So as far as behavior goes with these guys, they are nocturnal, so most of the time it's not recommended to you know, keep these guys in a bedroom or anywhere you're gonna be sleeping because they are moving around so much at night. If you're a light sleeper, you're gonna be waking up to them jumping around, making noise. As well, it's something to know, they won't be quite as active when the lights are on during the day. They do still move around, they eat, uh, do things during the day, but it's a lot less active. They are arboreal, but you can see our setup here. We've got the fish tank, which is a 20 gallon, and then the crested gecko setup that we have is actually a 20 gallon as well. We just turned it on its side. As far as handling goes, you can handle these guys a little bit each day if you'd like. Every gecko is a little bit different. Some geckos really like to be held. You can tell that they enjoy being out with you. Some are a little bit more timid. So you have to pay a little bit of attention to your gecko. You know, they do like to be comfortable in their habitat. So you can handle them. We don't handle ours too often. Usually let him be, just let him hang out in his environment, in his terrarium as much as he likes. As far as feeding goes with these guys, they're actually one of the most simple reptiles to get. You don't have to be running to the pet store to get mice or crickets or anything like that. Typically crested geckos are gonna be fed a dry mix of crested gecko food. So that makes it super easy. You can feed this stuff dry as well as mixing it with water, turn it into a little bit of a paste. So that's really nice. Adult geckos feed every two to three days. Juveniles, when they're still growing up, you are feeding them daily. Uh, with ours, we do get crickets once or twice a month just to mix it up for them. We're dusting those with a little bit of calcium dust just to make sure he's still getting the nutrients he needs that he normally gets from that dry mix. Food is super easy. As far as water goes, they're typically just drinking whatever they need off the leaves. So whether you're misting it or you've got a setup kind of like ours that it's just an automatic mister, you just gotta make sure, usually at least misting twice a day so they're getting enough water on the leaves as well as maintaining that humidity in there. As far as terrarium setup goes, you can see we've just got a 20 gallon tank which is kind of the minimum you need for uh, an adult crested gecko. Now, like I said, it is the same size as that fish tank. So you can see both the setups here. I actually just made a video that I'll link up here if you wanna check out that setup. But the crested gecko environment is pretty easy. They don't need any special lighting like UVA or UVB. Sometimes it is still recommended to get a UVB light in there. We've actually also got the lighting set up automatically. So it is recommended to have shorter days during the winter, longer days during the summer. Just kind of vary it throughout the year, just like a natural setting would be. So ours are set to turn on at sunrise and set to turn off at sunset. So in the winter, days are shorter and the summer days are longer. That way they can have a little bit more of a naturalistic sunrise, sunset timing to the light. With ours, we actually just have some LED strips up in the top in that little hood that I built. So it is outside the tank. Also warms it up a little bit. So he's got a little bit of a temperature gradient from top to bottom. They don't need any special heating which is also super nice. No special lighting and no special heating you know, drops the cost of owning these guys a significant amount, which is awesome. With ours, it is a front opening terrarium. So you can see here, you know, we just pop this clip and the whole thing folds down. Typically, that is the best option for crested geckos just because they do like to climb. So if you have a top opening tank, they're always gonna be right there. So if you do have that front opening tank, they can climb away from you towards the back you know, if they get a little nervous. Ours is a bioactive setup. We've got some live plants in there as well as some planted substrate. That way everything just takes care of itself. All the nutrients, it just kind of keeps going back into itself. Live plants definitely aren't required. A lot of people do just use fake plants and even just paper towels on the bottom of the tank because it makes it a little easier to clean. Either way, if you're setting it up with live plants or fake plants, you're gonna wanna have plenty of hiding places as well as climbing spaces. So like I said, this 20 gallon is about the minimum you want for a full-size adult. Uh, this guy is about full size. If you are gonna keep multiple, you're gonna need to take much bigger than this. That way they make sure they have their own territories and there's not so much fighting. So with our tank here, like I said, we've got a bioactive setup. So we've got some clay pellets on the bottom for a little drainage layer. And then our planted substrate is actually just a mix of cocoa fiber, a little bit of sand, sphagnum moss, 
an orchid bark. So the reason we set it up like that is because the substrate retains a lot of moisture, which in turn keeps the humidity in the tank uh, where it needs to be. So that helped a lot with humidity. So we've got a little Christmas moss that's grown here. As well on the bottom, we've got a peace lily. Up top, we've just got a golden pothos that's kind of growing up and then those vines are coming down. We've had this set up for about a year, so everything's growing in. You can see on the bottom, when I trim the plants, I'll take a few leaves and just put them on the bottom so they can start breaking down and adding nutrients to the tank. And then every once in a while, I'll put just a little bit of fertilizer, make sure I bury it in the ground real good for the plants just to give them a little boost. But most of the time, with him being in there as well, we've got some springtails down on the bottom that help break up all the mold and everything. It usually smells just like a jungle and it's pretty awesome. As far as pricing goes on these guys, like I mentioned, there's a few things such as lighting and heat that you don't necessarily need, so that keeps the pricing down. But for our gecko, we, we got him when he was a juvenile. He wasn't just super small. He was about half this size when we got him about a year ago. And I believe, if I remember correctly, we picked him up for about 60 bucks. There were some that were smaller and younger that were a little cheaper but we wanted something that was a little older a little hardier just so we didn't have to worry about it as much when we picked them up so they range probably from about 50 bucks to some morphs being a couple thousand dollars so there's a large variety range in price there if you're just picking up a normal one probably say between 50 and 100 bucks with the tank you know we've just got a 20 gallon here a new 20 gallon tank you're going to be looking at somewhere around 60 to 80 dollars you can sometimes find them used just gotta be careful with what's been kept in the tank previously. Usually at least 50 bucks for a tank. If you do use fake plants versus live plants, it can be a little bit cheaper. With ours, I built the backgrounds and then added those live plants in and made the substrate. So I would plan on at least another 100 bucks for just setting up the tank as well as food and everything. So with getting these guys set up with a lizard tank and the setup and everything, I'd probably plan on at least two to $300. So overall, I would definitely recommend Crested Geckos from anywhere from you know experienced hobbyists to be beginners. Uh, they're pretty awesome. Easy beginner lizards to start. Pricing, like I mentioned, is going to be a little bit lower than a lot of things, as well as care requirements and food makes it a little bit simpler. Once you got that set up and it's in a good spot, you don't have to worry about them too much. Just once they're grown, feeding them every couple days and keeping an eye on them, making sure they're looking healthy. All right, guys, well, that's going to be a wrap on this one. I appreciate you watching. If I like you learned something, please make sure to drop a like. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.